Here, in the desert of northern Niger, lies a forgotten battlefield of the nuclear industry. Dust, water, soil, and even scrap metal scattered around the area all carry an unseen but deadly threat. Landlocked in the Saharan Desert, Niger ranks as the fourth poorest country on the planet. Its soil, however, is rich in mineral resources such as uranium. It's this precious metal providing the fuel for nuclear reactors, which drew the French nuclear industry to the region in the 1970s. Lured by the economic promise of the mining operation, settlers from Niger soon followed. Now, the twin mining towns of Akokan and Ali sit among a legacy of industrial waste, environmental destruction, and radiation. Al Mustafa Al Hassan heads a local organization which has been protesting the effects of the uranium mining by French company Areva. While sounding the alarm bell at an international level, his priority is to inform the local people of the hidden danger. The people, no, I dire, they don't have fear because they don't know what is going on with radioactivity. They don't know what is going on with radioactivity. The priority of the people is the poverty. But, quand même, this problem, il ne faut pas les perdre de vie. Il est là. Les deux vont à la fois parce que la radioactivité augmente la pauvreté, parce qu'elle fait des victimes. Clouds of dust caused by a controlled explosion in the open pit mine carry poisonous gas towards town. Mountains of industrial, radioactive waste sit in the open air for decades. And the shifting of millions of tons of rock and earth has corrupted a once clean source of groundwater that is also rapidly disappearing due to industrial overuse. Comme vous l'avez constaté, la faune est, a disparu. La flore a disparu autour de la ville d'Arlit. C'est vrai que c'est un pays désertique, mais quand même, il y a des arbres des, qui vivent dans des déserts. Donc l'héritage pour nous, c'est la pollution durable. A full, independent investigation of radiation levels and the impacts on human health and the environment has never been carried out. But in November 2009, Greenpeace and its partners were able to conduct a brief scientific investigation of the area. They measured radiation levels in and around the mining towns. In some cases, readings went over a hundred times above internationally recommended levels. Just within a few days, we found that the people of these villages are exposed to unacceptably high levels of radiation caused by radioactive materials in the street, radioactive scrap metal in the market, and it clearly shows that the mining companies owned by Arifa are not taking care of the problems. Soil and water samples taken by Greenpeace were investigated by the French Nuclear Research Institute, CRIRAD, in Valence. Its findings further confirm the radioactive contamination of the region. The analyses we have been able to show, d'abord, the persistence of the contamination in uranium. Sur quatre des cinq échantillons d'eau, la quantité d'uranium dépasse les recommandations de l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. Ensuite, la présence d'autres substances radioactives, dont le radon, qui est un gaz radioactif et qui est dissous dans l'eau, et puis la pollution par des éléments chimiques, par exemple des nitrates, de l'ammonium, du molybdène, à des concentrations pour les nitrates et le molybdène qui dépassent là aussi les recommandations de l'OMS. Pourtant, ces eaux sont toujours distribuées aujourd'hui à la population et aux travailleurs pour leur consommation. Exposure to radioactivity can lead to serious health issues such as birth defects, leukemia and cancer. Areva claims conditions in the mines and their surroundings are safe and radiation levels are being monitored. Two local hospitals, funded by the company, check the health of workers and the rest of the population. The principal pathologies we have here are the two et les, les toux, les diarrhées, les dermatoses. Et donc euh, ces pathologies sont pratiquement les mêmes qu'on retrouve dans les autres régions du, du pays. Ce n'est pas du tout lié aux radiations. Areva, however, fails to mention that the hospitals lack the equipment and expertise to properly diagnose cancer. Many ex-workers are already suffering from unexplained diseases. Almost 10 years ago, laundry worker Jigozaki collapsed during his work at the Somaya mine. Since then, he's been forced to retire and was never informed about the cause of his condition.
Renewed interest in nuclear power as an alternative energy source to fight climate change has led to what some have termed a nuclear renaissance. Areva's operations have already spread to over 100 countries around the world. Here in Niger, the company is planning to open a new mine at this site called Imuraren. Its critics point out that 40 years of uranium mining have only resulted in massive damage to the environment instead of delivering on the economic promises to Niger. Je ne sais pas quoi dire aux gens de d'Imran. Si vous voulez le le fait qu'on demande l'exploitation de l'uranium, c'est pour lutter contre les fléaux de la pauvreté. Mais ce que nous constatons malheureusement après 40 ans à Arlit en tout cas, ces fléaux n'a fait qu'augmenter. Donc à Imran, je pense que c'est exactement la même chose qui va se passer. Et maintenant, si j'ai un appel, c'est d'appeler la population à être un peu plus vigilante pour qu'il y ait moins de pollution et qu'il y ait plus de retombées. On the same night that leaves most of Akokan's streets unlit, the uranium mined here is powering a million households a continent away. In about 10 years' time, the local economy will dry up as the mines run out of uranium. The 80,000 people living here and centuries of environmental pollution will all be left behind in the dust. <laughs>